Hi everyone, I'm David from the Sado Project, and in this video we're going to talk about Inception and what blockchain can learn from it. Now, one of the more subtle themes of the film involves this character, Maul. And if you've seen it, you'll know that she falls into the world of the dream, and she locks away a truth that she once knew. She deliberately forgets the fact that her world is not real. A subtle thing about Inception that not a lot of people pick up on, though, is that Maul has an opposite, and that opposite character is Sado. Sado also falls into the world of the dream. He also forgets the fact that the world isn't real. However, at the end of the film, he remembers, and it's the act of remembering that actually triggers the positive ending of the film. Now, what the director, Christopher Nolan, is doing here is he's playing with a Greek idea called anamnesis. This is Plato's theory of the soul. It comes from Socrates. And the basic idea is that before the, the soul is born, it knows everything, but it's the shock of birth that causes it to forget. Socrates cared about this because it was part of his proof of the afterlife. And it led him to believe that there's no such thing as learning. All forms of learning are just remembering. We know that Nolan is being deliberate about this. Uh, if you pay attention, you'll notice that uh, Sato's company, Proclus Global, is named after a Neoplatonic philosopher who was dealing with this idea. Now, the reason this matters for blockchain is that we're about 10 years into the Bitcoin experiment and people are forgetting what it is that they used to know. If you take a look in the United States, there's a lot of research, especially in proof of stake circles, that is basically saying, look, you know, what's new about Bitcoin is that it's a consensus protocol. It's a way for distributed systems to keep in sync. And people who are saying this and working on this, they like to go back to Leslie Lamport's paper on the Byzantine general problem. And they say, you know, Satoshi invented a better solution than this. And the problem is that this is not true. What Satoshi invented is a network that pays for itself. And it's the fact that the network pays for itself that makes it trustless and makes it suitable for serving as a kind of money. So when people are talking about blockchain scaling, uh, a lot of people are missing the point because they're forgetting the property that we need to focus on. If we want to be scaling blockchain, what we actually need to scale is the self-sufficiency of the network so that when we're processing a lot of data, the network is still capable of paying for everything it needs. Now, in the rest of this presentation, I'm going to talk a bit about how we do this by going back again to inception. Now, one of the ways Inception tells us how to solve this problem is by using symbolic language. And water is one of the main symbols that the film uses. Uh, if you take a look at the dream levels, for instance, you can see that the first dream level right up there on the top left is a light drizzle. Then you go to a hotel with a thunderstorm outside. And there's a river by the hotel, actually, too. The uh, third dream level is a snow world. Snow, of course, is a form of water. And note that the water is getting more and more violent the deeper we get until we're literally plunged into an ocean that the script says exists on the shores of our subconscious. And that is what water is doing. Water is a symbol of the subconscious. Uh, you'll see scenes like this where Cobb will wash his face and then he'll almost instantly, his subconscious will come to the fore as he hallucinates about his dead wife in the mirror. Uh, you've also got characters who will take a drink of water and then fall to sleep. If you're interested in watching Inception this way, it's really a wonderful film. and You're going to pick up a lot of details. But the reason this matters is that in Inception, one of the reasons Nolan's doing this is he's telling us that the journey into the dream is a journey into the world of the subconscious. And the deeper you go into the dream world, the deeper you're going into the psyche of the character itself. And the reason this matters is that in Inception, the problem is on the deepest level. We have Ariadne, uh, the guide. She's serving from the, the Cretan Theseus myth. And she goes into Cobb's uh, memory and the, the, she finds the monster in the basement. Uh, she also accompanies him in the final heist. And we find Maul literally at the center of the maze, at the, the center of the deepest level in the psyche. And the reason this matters is if the problem is on the deepest level, Inception tells us that the solution has to be on the same level. It has to be on the deepest level too. And that raises a really interesting question for blockchain because we can ask ourselves, well, what is the deepest level in blockchain? Uh, for a lot of people, um, because they're not thinking of the blockchain itself as something that have levels, this question doesn't make sense because they'll think, well, Bitcoin is the first level and the second is the lightning network. And that's not true. 
If you remember, the fact that a blockchain is self-sufficient means we have two levels right away. The first level is the tech level. It's the software, it's the network, it's the servers things are running on. But Bitcoin also has to have that economic level. Uh, that's what's actually missing from people who think it's just a consensus protocol. And the economic level has to pay for everything that we need done at the tech level. And the problem with Bitcoin scaling basically is that starting in about 2013, it became obvious that the economic level was broken. Uh, we had market failures because the money wasn't going where we needed it to go. So you have people like Craig Wright who are saying that miners are extracting value from the network and they're not investing in the right things. Uh, we also see in the Ethereum network, uh, there are a lot of people who are saying, well, look at the miners. They're, they're not actually paying for user access. They're foisting that off onto a third party company uh, that is actually monopolizing the network layer. And this is where we've gotten in blockchain by 2019. Essentially, people, uh, they get interested in the technology and they go down to the economic level and they say, well, we can't solve these problems. All we can do is try to make it cheaper. And so they go back up to the tech level and they develop things like better light client systems. Uh, they develop things like, oh, let's use IPFS. And they basically develop a lot of ways of trying to pass the buck to other people in the system. And this is why these systems all have really horrific trade-offs that prevent them from scaling. Uh, should mention, to be fair, there are some projects that actually ignore the problem and think that the economic layer is working properly. Um, it's not. To solve it, what we have to do, though, is we have to do the same thing that they do in Inception. We have to go deeper. And the thing that's deeper than the economic layer is the value incentive layer of the network. And we can think about this really clearly because look at proof of work and proof of stake and say, what do these networks value? Well, what they value fundamentally is what they pay for, which is mining and staking. But what should they value? At scale, we need to value everything that the network needs to survive. We need to value everything that gives the network this self-sufficiency. And one of the big problems with blockchain scaling is people are not conceptualizing blockchain in this way. And if you push them on it, they'll say, well, that's, you know, that's impossible. How can you possibly value one thing that is going to result in people doing all of this? However, there is something that does it. There's a very simple solution that if you value it, everything else follows. And that solution is to use a new kind of work. And instead of measuring hashing, and instead of measuring staking, what we measure is we measure the collection of fees and the passing of those fees into the blockchain, the sharing of them with the peers that are gonna put them into blocks. And one of the wonderful things about using this new kind of work is that it does incentivize everything. If you're a network node and you're better at collecting transactions, you make more money. If you are better at sharing transactions with the people who will produce blocks, you're going to make more money. If you're better at servicing light clients, you're in a position to collect their fees and you're gonna make more money. Essentially, this measure of work allows us to create a system that, that if you are better at doing anything that users value, you can translate this into more money. And what happens then is everything that the users value, which is what they're paying for, which is what drives economic self-sufficiency, is something that is profitable to focus on. The value incentive layer is fixed. And just like in Inception, when the problems at the deepest level are fixed, the problems at the higher level levels, they just get fixed automatically. So the economics all of a sudden start directing money towards different kinds of things on the tech layer. And that's whatever the users uh, are actually valuing most. And the result of this is that the same thing happens in blockchain that happens in Inception. Remember, at the beginning of Inception, we have the false children of Limbo building sandcastles on the beach. A lot of people miss this, but at the end of the film, the last line of dialogue is the child telling his father he's building a castle on the cliff. We transition to building on rock. And that's what Sato is. By fixing the underlying incentives, by developing a new kind of proof of work, where the work is the collection and sharing of money, Sato creates a foundation that fixes the underlying issues that are preventing scaling. If you're interested in the details of how we do it, you can visit us at sato.tech. We've got a four-page white paper. It's a serious white paper. 
uh, and it explains how to instantiate a system that solves this problem. Uh, and if you're interested in scaling, we do hope you check it out. If you have any questions about what we're doing, or if you just want to talk about Inception, though, feel free to leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you.